everybody, it's Norm from Tested here at Maker Fair 2018. Now this is Jonathan Tippett, who is close to fulfilling your dream of building a giant exosuit mech. This is the prosthesis. This is prosthesis, yes, that's the world's first fully functional exobionic mech. Wow, you were saying that this had been a dream of yours for 12 years, you've been designing this, and when I chatted with you five years ago, you had a prototype for a leg. This is much more than a leg. Yeah, we've come a long way, you know? I mean, we, we developed the leg at the Eat Art Foundation with hundreds and thousands of volunteer hours, tons of student projects poured into that. And then we joined forces with Furion, who gave us the resources to actually finally build the thing. They, they recognized the excitement of a mech racing league, and they're like, let's go, let's do this. Let's, let's form a company. And that's what Furion Exobionics is. I want to talk a little bit about, about the the philosophy behind this design, why it looks like this. Like you sit here as a pilot and you're controlling these four legs with your limbs. You really wanted that one-to-one -one control. Totally, yeah. I mean, at the heart of it, it's a sport. Like the, the, the whole project was kind of created to celebrate the, the age-old pursuit of physical mastery and human skill. Uh, it came from my experiences mountain biking and snowboarding and doing martial arts, even playing an instrument. Like mm -hmm. anything that requires practice, dedication, focus. I think that that's like a really important part of, of the human condition and human spirit. And automation has its place in the world. And I'm an engineer, I love robots, I love automation. But I think it's really important to remember how wonderful it is to devote yourself to mastering something uh, and then getting good at it. And in the context of technology, so it was a sort of this, this athletic and sports interest melding with technology that led to the form factor of a giant mech. So let's talk about that form factor. You have four legs, uh, they're a lot in one line across, mm -hmm. right? And the way I saw you walk was, you said it was like a gorilla almost? So That's the goal, yeah. So the goal, the, the sort of architecture of the machine isn't like any living creature. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, nature has like an infinite design budget and an infinite schedule. So yes. they can do anything they want. They've got the most amazing control systems, the most amazing materials. Us poor, lowly, earthbound engineers only have a certain amount of uh, sort of technology available to us. So I wanted to make a machine that was very simple. Uh, the legs are very simple, they only have two joints. Mm. Putting them on a common axis gave the machine a lot of symmetry so that you could, uh, you wouldn't have to deal with like a long machine. As soon as the machine gets long, like a normal quadruped, you've got to worry about leaning on your back legs or right. your front legs. This way, it's all the same. It also was easier to manufacture a machine with four identical legs. Oh, the legs are identical. Mm -hmm. You said two points of movement, so there's no, the feet, don't pivot up and down? The ankles are passive. They're passively ah. stabilized. So there is a, a, a leveling system so yeah. that your foot always lands level yeah. uh, with some compliance in it. Yeah. And like I was saying, the feet were a huge challenge, just kind of there where the rubber hits the road and things get ugly. So there's a lot of development there still. But even with two joints per each of these legs, that's still a lot of physical mastery you have to do. Because <laughs> yeah. you have your joints, so it's your shoulder and your elbow, yeah. that correct? and you have that for your legs as well. Yeah. Walk me through what it's like to, to move this thing well, one it's, step at a time. It's totally bizarre because you're, the, the knees of the machine, if you will, bend forwards. Yeah. And that was something that we learned from the alpha leg, the first prototype leg. The first prototype leg, the knee bent backwards. And it was on this tower and it would fall back and forth and you would have to use this one leg to push you over forwards and back. Mm -hmm. And without really even doing an engineering analysis or simulations, we just learned empirically that it was way easier to jump the alpha leg backwards than forwards. Okay. So like at the last minute, like months before we started, maybe weeks before we started the build, I'm like, we're turning the legs backwards. So the, the knees bend backwards, which is easy for your arms to mm -hmm. kind of map, but right. it does weird things yes. when you're trying to figure out what to do with your legs. Yeah. So you really just have to put in the time. You can't think about it. You can't think about, okay, well, I'm bending this way and that way. You just have to walk and fall and walk and fall and walk and fall. And then your brain figures it out. I mean, that's the beauty of it. Your nervous system We're figures it out. Very plastic. You, yeah. You're creating new muscle memory. Totally. Essentially. Yeah. And that's why you're, you're vertical. It's not, you're not face down because you're not doing the exact movements a gorilla would make. Right. Even though it is all four limbs on the ground. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. It's wild when you're in there. It, it feels like you're crawling like a quadruped. Yeah. You're at about 45 degrees, so you're kind of halfway in between, and that yeah. was like for ergonomics. But you're essentially standing right. and walking on all fours, so it's kind of magical. 
So where are you with your, your practice and getting accustomed to this new body? Uh, well, I mean, the shows we're putting on today, every time I get in, it's basically a personal best. Like, I've done, I don't know, less than 100 hours at the controls for this thing. And I've gotten to the point where I can reasonably, reliably do what I call a one step, which is when you get on three legs and then you put one leg up and you fall onto it, and then you get onto your next three legs and then you put the next leg forward. <laughs> and so the next phase of training will be to get some more fluid motion. And it's so cool. You have these moments where you stop thinking about it and you think about where you want to go. And I've had moments where I'm like, caught myself and yeah. done two steps in a row and I'm like, I don't even know how I did that. Yeah. And, and that's the magic. That's like... If like, it was easy, it wouldn't be fun. Totally. Right? The learning curve shows you from beginning to end. Yeah. You're like a baby again, learning to, learning to crawl, yeah. learning to walk. I, when I was learning to snowboard, I spent my first three days on my butt, you know? And it's like, that's, that's the price you pay for the reward of the that like amazing moment where you start linking turns. And that mechanical design, that's all locked in? Do you have any room for... for you know, I've been so satisfied and grateful that so much of this machine has worked right out of the gate. Like, the suspension is firm but compliant. The bumper bars have saved my pace mm -hmm. uh, hundreds of times. The power plant delivers. Um, just doing sort of individual drills, like trying push-ups and chassis rolls and stuff, like, there's all these pieces of evidence that, that confirm that this machine has what it takes to like really gallop. It's just a matter of like dialing the machine and practicing. Every event is a milestone. Yeah, yeah, totally. yeah. yeah. We'll be back next year, next year, next year, and one of these days we'll see you gallop yeah, 30 Yeah, I'll just jump over the barrier. Oh. <laughs> awesome. Jonathan, it's great to see you Yeah, here. nice to see you again, Norm. And congratulations on having a machine that you can actually walk in. Thanks, man, thank you, <laughs> yeah. Neck was here. <laughs>